What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And unfortunately, we got another loss, a major loss to talk about with the Chicago Bulls as the Bulls get blown out against the Phoenix Suns. We're also going to talk about some stupid trade ideas from Bill Simmons. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So the Bulls just come out uh, uh, flat again after rest days. Like the, the 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 up and down nature of this Chicago Bulls team, the lack of consistent assist, uh, consistency um, and intensity, I should say, uh, from the Chicago Bulls team is just it's it's wild. It's it's disheartening to see this team literally looked like a young team that's just came together that's still trying to figure out ways to win. And considering we have veterans on this team, that's just not acceptable. The Bulls got outworked, outplayed, out just everything in this game against the uh, against the Phoenix Suns. The fact that Devin Booker had one of the most efficient games in NBA history in only three quarters to put up 51 points should tell you what the, how bad this team played last night. And the fact of the matter is, is that, is that it's this. I know a lot of Bulls fans, especially the knee-jerk reaction ones, are going to go right to saying things like, oh, well, yeah, you extended bi- 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 uh, bi- uh, what's the guy? Billy Donovan. You extended Billy Donovan. Because I almost forget his name because I'm so pissed off. Oh, my God, a loss like this and you extended your head coach. This loss was not on Billy Donovan. You saw Billy Donovan actually did make adjustments in this game. Billy Donovan went from uh, – you know, a, a mixed zone defense to man-to-man defense to trying to double-team him at the point of attack. He tried several things. This team was slow on rotations. This team was um, slow on just making decisions when it came to it. And then Devin Booker completely cooked this team. Completely cooked this team. DeAndre Ayton, yes, he did. He did pat uh, stat pad at the end of that, but still ended up with 30 points. When you have two players combined for 80 points, it's going to be tough to beat any team like that. Just period. Mikael Bridges did not have... Mikael Bridges was the one that I was worried about just going off in this game because, you know, the Bulls let role players go off and Mikael Bridges is a very high-level role player. Only goes 3 for 13 in this game. Campaign, 3 for 10. These were two players that I pointed out the Bulls could not let them cook. Torrey Craig, he went 1 for 4 from 3-point range, 3 for 7 overall from the field, but there were times where defensively, That man was cooking. This Bulls team did not do anything. They got punched in the mouth and took it and went back home to cry. And unfortunately, they're not even going back home. The way that this team played today, or last night, I should say, is completely unacceptable. There's no level of acceptability in the way that the Chicago Bulls team played yesterday. And I am saying this, and and I said this over on Locked on Bulls, And this may be something that a lot of people disagree with. Don't get me wrong. I love DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan is cooking. But the way that you have this particular way uh, that you have to play with DeMar DeRozan is literally limiting the other players' opportunities to to have the ball and grow. Now, Patrick Williams sucked in this game. He was 0 for for 8 overall from the field. Now, he did do some things defensively at times. He tried to get some energy. He tried to push the, the, the ball at times. He just wasn't successful in it. So this wasn't a game where he was just being passive. This was just a game where he was not being successful. Two very different things, right? I know, again, a lot of Bulls fans that don't watch games and watch the stat sheet are going to go, like QLM Gaming, who's a, who's a fucking idiot, is going to literally go and just be like, hey, oh, another another zero from Pat Williams. Yeah, it's, you're going to have cold shooting nights, and this was a cold shooting night for Patrick Williams, but this wasn't a game in which Patrick Williams wasn't trying. Now, you can say all day whether it's, it's worse or better the fact that Patrick Williams was trying and still wasn't successful, right? That's a conversation for a different type of conversation. But the passive P thing wasn't a thing in this game. He was trying. He just couldn't hit shit. Patrick Williams, since saying he could become a superstar in this league, has scored only seven points in two games. That's just, that's just the reality of it. Zach Levine, even though the stats don't look as bad, 7 for 15 from the field, one for six from three-point range, six for seven from free throw, 21 points. We all know. Anybody who watched the game, Zach as, as well tried to stuff the stats towards the end of that game when it didn't matter. It was already out of way. 
Now, he did chip in four rebounds, seven assists as well. Only one turnover in this game. No fouls from Zach Levine. But it doesn't matter. In a matchup at your position in which you should want to own that matchup and step up when you see Devin Booker cooking, Zach Levine gave us nothing. Nothing. Right? A big, fat zero overall. Not on the stat sheet, but but in the way that he impacted the game. Zach Levine having the lowest plus minus on this team at negative seven. I'm sorry, negative 17. Nikola Vucevic, there were times where Vuce was trying. He got completely cooked on the defensive end, but 17 points, eight rebounds, one assist, two steals, and a block. But, you know, let's throw the stats out. We, the stats don't matter in this one. If you watch this game, the body language of this team, the way they were, they, the lack of response with this team, the lack of execution from this team, just overall, everything from this team, they gave us a bunch of nothing. This was an embarrassing loss and one that the Bulls should be forced to rewatch every, the whole plane trip or whatever they're doing to get to Golden State to face the Warriors. They need to be watching this game on repeat because, listen, you got your skirts pulled up and you bent over and took it. Welcomed it. This is not the acceptable play from this team in no stretch of the imagination. There's nothing that's defensible about the way that this team played basketball last night. You can talk, we can, like I said, we can get into the nitty-gritty of the stats. The stat rebound battle was completely blown up. The Bulls, I think, won the turnover battle. They, they did some things that on the stat sheet it looked like, hey, but the, res, the results weren't there. This Bulls team should have lost by 30 points last night. It's unacceptable in the way that this team plays. It's unacceptable in the fact that this team can't keep up intensity to save their lives. It's, it's messed up that this team seems to not care either. The one thing that I started off this season saying, the thing that worried me so much about this team was questioning this team's heart. They then go and put some wins together to where you're like, okay, maybe they're developing that heart. They're starting to realize, hey, we've been messing up. Let's get this crap together. But then you come out and you put up a performance like this, and it's not about losing the game. You're going to lose games, right? It's, the, it's just the way that they went about it, the way if you look and watch this team, the way that this team just, it ain't it. Four for 25 from three-point range, good enough for 16% overall, that's not going to cut it. There's no stretch of the imagination in which that gets it done and that cuts it. This team played like crap. That's just it. You, you got to look at everybody at that point. Zach, DeMar, Vooch, everyone from top to bottom, a performance like this where nobody steps up, you got to look at that. And we know we were dealing, dealing with some injuries. Javante Green didn't play very many minutes in this game because he was listed on the injury report as questionable. I do think that him and uh, Goren's kind of injuries really probably affected them more and they probably should have set out this game. But at the end of the day, it's this. It doesn't matter. We got a Tony Bradley signing, signing in last game. That's how bad this is. There's only two situations in which we're going to see Tony Bradley. Either the Bulls are blowing out a team or they're getting blown out. One is acceptable. One is not. I've been very vocal at the fact that I don't think this team is going to make any major changes by the trade deadline. Not to say that I agree with it. I'm evaluating what this front office does. This front office is not a front office that's going to make some major moves. Now, I know their first year in they did, but that was a completely different situation. But I would say this. You have to start taking a look at something. And I said this over on Lock the Bulls. I started making this point. And I got sidetracked from it because I'm so damn upset. DeMar DeRozan, you have to start looking at DeMar DeRozan at some point and saying, yes, you put up points. Yes, you save us at times. Yes, all this stuff. But the ball-dominant nature of Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan on the court, at some point, you're stifling the growth. They'd be different if, this, if we had two ball-dominant players and we were a championship-level team. At that point, the young players got to figure it out and get in where they fit in. But you have players on this team that need to develop, players on this team that have shown you when they do have the ball. I would assume we played with the most heart last night. Let me, let me be clear on that. While I have a lot of bad things to say about a lot of players, I would assume who had the most heart on the court for the Chicago Bulls last night. So, Io, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not again, five for eight from the field for Io to assume. The stat sheet looks pretty good for him, but I'm kind of, if anybody gets a pass, it's only Io to assume, and even then he only gets so far with me on that. But looking at this team's play, looking at the way that this team, the lack of execution, and the way that these players aren't developing, I said this before. 
This, this, this team is not developing. The young players aren't developing on this team. They, they may even see an increase at times, but that's just by the nature of being in the NBA for an additional year. You have to start eventually looking at things, and I said this on Locked On Bulls, and you know, people dis- some people agreed, some people disagreed, but at some point, you have to ask yourself, while DeMar is saving your team in, in these close games, in these tight games, is it almost more worth it to not have that to allow these younger players to develop? We've seen Patrick Williams is way better when he has the ball in his hands. Right? You don't have a player like Lonzo Ball out there anymore that takes some of that load off in transition that's just that gets other players involved by the nature of him getting steals, him playing good defense, getting players out in transition. You don't have that on this team right now anymore. And again, I'm not saying at it the, the, the Bulls fans that are blow it all up, y'all gotta slow down. This is not this isn't blow it up, and it doesn't benefit the team, and which we'll get into when we talk about this Ben Simmons situation. But at the end of the day, it's this this team has to figure it out. And if they and if they can't figure it out with this version of the team, you got to start moving on from people. I think that it's it's telling the fact that it was rumored coming into the season that this team was was looking at extending Nikola Vucevic and we've heard nothing about it since. Right? Nothing about it since. Could the Bulls use that expiring contract in Nikola Vucevic? While I know some Bulls fans are going to blame everything on Vuce, you got to stop that as well. But with that being said, is it time to start looking at something like that? I still don't think the Bulls are likely to do it, right? Because of this Bulls team, because of the front office, because of the, the ownership, everything. There's a lot of reasons why I don't think this team will do it. But at the end of the day, you have to start looking at it. And Zach Levine is not playing like the Zach Levine that earned that contract. He's just not. And I know some Bulls fans are going to get excited. The Bulls should have never gave him that con- Yes. You had to at that point. Unfortunately, you can't let a, let a player at Zach Levine's age and what he had been up until the point of getting hurt last season, you couldn't have let that walk for nothing. But now you have to really start evaluating this team. Listen, I'll say this, right? To my credit, to, to the point that I made that I don't think this Bulls team is going to make some major changes, we know that AK and Eversley are evaluating front office. They evaluated this team their first year in, and then we got moves. Wendell Carter being moved. Daniel Gafford being moved. We got a lot of moves at that point. And, you know, they may very well be doing that now and saying, hey, listen, we rejiggered this roster, but this ain't it. At the end of the day, this ain't it. And this is not one of those losses that I can completely blame on Coach Billy Donovan. He tried to do some things here. This team played with no heart. None. And at some point, that, that's, that, that starts catching up with you. And we've reached that level now of it catching up with the Chicago Bulls. But let me know what you guys think on all that down below. I know I just ranted for the last 12 minutes, but nonetheless, let's get into this um, ben, Bill Simmons uh, trade ideas. I'm just going to play the clip, and we'll break it down after this. Chicago should tank. And they should go deeper than that. They should blow it up. Copyright Kevin O'Connor. Yeah, I have three. I have three trades right now that save Chicago, put them in the Wembenyama sweepstakes, give them a do-over, and they're ready to go. Trade number one: DeRozan and Vucevic to the Lakers for Russ in those two firsts, and make the twenty-seven unprotected, make the twenty-nine top five protected. If you're the Lakers, if you're going to keep Davis, which I think is insane, but it seems like they're going to, if you're going to have LeBron. LeBron's already putting out all these feelers for, uh, yeah, you know, you don't want to waste a great year for me. Um, and the West is wide open. So you can talk yourself into it. What happens to Poinka if the trade doesn't work? He gets fired. He's going to get fired anyway. DeRozan and Vooch to the Lakers for Russ and two firsts, one lightly protected. Then trade Levine to the Knicks. Levine's coming off, you know, the knee injury in May. He hasn't looked the same. But if you're the Knicks, you're like, well, we would have signed Levine for the max in the in the summer, so we'll get him anyway. So do topping and expirings and uh, maybe make take them back, back the uh, Fournier trade and maybe do like a top four protected first next year, something like that. And you have Zach Levine and roll the dice that his knee will be fine. And then the last piece, Caruso, if Chicago tanks, is the most interesting trade piece. His contract is really good. I think it's $9 million. He's somebody that makes sense on the Bucks. He's somebody that makes sense on the Warriors. He's somebody that makes sense on the Cavaliers. Could Okoro be enough to get, they don't have any picks left. Could Okoro and something else be enough to get Caruso? Probably not because 
I have Golden State stepping in here. Golden State, Moody, DiVincenzo, and some sort of future pick swap in 2027. Give him three billion bucks too, because you know Reinsdorf has, has been a cheap owner his whole life. And you get Caruso on the Warriors. That's somebody who could play crunch time for them. Watch out for that. So anyway, you get all that stuff, you get all those picks, and you're in the Wembenyama sweepstakes. They should be doing this. Just Kyle, put that on the TikTok. I hope you turn the TikTok camera on because they should be doing that. All right. So Bill Simmons makes this ridiculous trade idea. And the reason why I say it's ridiculous is because I think people, and for Bulls fans that also forget this, to say, let's let's embrace the tank. Let's go full rebuild. The Bulls have less than a 50% chance, even if they were to have the number one odds, to hold on to that pick. It's top four protected. It goes to the Orlando Magic. And with all with the Bulls luck and the way that things go, I can completely see in the Bulls make a lot of trades to quote unquote tank for Victor Wimbiana. And then still not get that pick. And then look, you're stuck with no assets. You gave away all your trade assets at this point, and then we're going to be stuck in mediocrity for another five to six years. Now, some would say they were stuck in mediocrity now. The Bulls are in such an interesting place because you have talent on this team that, regardless if you think it fits or not, you still have talent on this team. You don't have your own assets. We, have, we don't have our own first-round draft pick this year. Well, it's top four protected. We have our own next year. And then the year after that, it goes to San Antonio, which – has some level of protection to it as well. Um, so this team going full rebuild right now doesn't make sense. Retool makes more sense than a rebuild. But, and that's not to cause any PTSD with Garf, people who've been here since the Garf Foreman era. But with this being said is this, right? Bill Simmons, while I did want to go completely in on this, and I wanted to just eviscerate this, if you guys have listened to Bill Simmons for a while, you know he just starts speculating. The way that Bill Simmons' podcast and he, that he does is he'll literally just start it's like a stream of thought. He'll just be like, oh, well, the Bulls are doing this. They could do this, this, and this, 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 this. He doesn't really think about the ends. I guarantee you when, when Bill Simmons was coming up with this, he did not at all think about the fact, oh, the Bulls, lo- the pick is protected top four, and it goes to the Orlando Magic if it's not in the top four. But this is this these trade ideas are bananas, bro. Bananas. Like, I get it. The Bulls are 9-12, and 12, under 500, 21 games into the season. The season... 25% through. And it's, it's, let me not say, it's not impossible for the Bulls to turn this team around. It's not impossible for the Bulls to save this season with some improved play. It's not impossible. It, it, but it gets more unlikely every game, every week, every day that passes by, it gets more unlikely that the Bulls are going to pull themselves out of this hole. I, I've been very vocal with the fact that I still do think that this Bulls team is going to turn it around and be above 500 at some point this season. I'm not necessarily going to say they're going to have the type of 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 rise that the that the Boston Celtics had by the midway point of the season. Not saying that at all. We're not, we're not getting, if Zach Levine was playing like the Zach Levine that became a super efficient player and that was top ten in the league in scoring, I, I would give you that. But Zach Levine isn't playing like that. And while some fans are, are saying that, you know, and and me too, I was saying it at one point too. So this is not an indictment on anybody. It was like, oh well, uh, Zach Levine is injured. He has to work himself back into rhythm. Sometimes you don't work yourself back into rhythm during the season. Sometimes you have a whole season of being out of rhythm, and every day that goes by, us keep waiting on Zach Levine. Guess what? It's not happening. Lazo Ball ain't saving this team when, if, whenever he comes back. This, this tra- these trade ideas from Bill Simmons, while, I, I like I said, I think they were rooted in a place of just speculation, they're dumb and idiotic only for the fact of the matter is, is that this Bulls team to go full tank and full rebuild, that, like I said, a less than 50% chance to hold on to their pick. Even if they had the number one odds to get the first overall pick, less than a 50% chance to hold on to that pick. Is that worth rolling the dice on to go complete full rebuild and then still possibly miss out on that pick? I've been saying this, and this is why I also say that this, and the, for the people that are like, the Bulls have to go completely trade everybody away. If Even if that was the case, it makes more sense to do that next season. You know why it makes more sense to do that next season? Let me lay out the reasons for you. One, DeMar DeRozan's expiring contract at that point. Two, the Chicago Bulls own their own first round pick next season outright. And three, next season is rumored, the next draft, not this year's draft, the next year's draft, is rumored to be the first draft in which the 
NBA will allow high school players to start coming back into the NBA draft. You know what that means? That means that this that it's going to be almost a double draft. You're going to get the um the one and done players from college in that season. You're also going to get the high school players at that point who would be eligible for the draft, and you have more attempts at bites at the apple at that point in time. It makes more sense that if it is, if this bullshit, man, I know, get, don't get me wrong, to sit there and say, let's sit through another season and a half of this sounds terrible and it feels terrible to even say. But if it gets to that point, if this team gets to the point where there's, that where AK and Eversley looking and saying, listen, we just got to go completely restart on this. It just makes more sense to do that next season. I know as fans, it's easy to just sit there and think, trade, 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 trade. There's not any realistic trades, and the Bill Simmons trade, on top of that, aren't very realistic at all. But with that being said, right, he didn't even try to match salaries on most of that. Most of what his suggestions were, the salaries don't match. But what, even with that said, right, if it gets to that point to where you have to look at this team and say, listen, we, what we try to build here did not work. We try to lay a foundation. We got to pull up all the root. We got to unroot all this shit and start completely over, it makes more sense to do that next season. Sitting through another season and a half of this, I'm probably going to be all gray-bearded at that point, as are a lot of Bulls fans. But this team is just, this is one of the most frustrating teams to watch. And the reason why I say that, yes, we've seen darker times as Bulls fans. If you've been a long-term Bulls fans, we've seen way darker times. But the reason why this team, and, and it's so disappointing there, is because this team has some talent on it, right? It was different when we were watching freaking Eddie Curry and the, and the attempt at the two towers. It was different when we were seeing freaking Denzel Valentine and Chris Dunn. This team didn't have talent there. This team has some talent on it, and it's just not coming together well, and that is even more frustrating for some Bulls fans. But let me know what you guys think about everything down below. Sound off. I'll probably have another episode today uh, because this episode ended up turning into just a rant. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and or voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. And peace, y'all. And see red man. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Media. Media.